What's up guys? It's Justin again with another video. Uh, today we're going to start our first part of our uh, Chalneth series. This is going to be uh, basically the assembly of the terrain. Um, I've got most of it done already, so here's like a smaller section. Um, I can reach over here. This is the large building, and I left my uh, Octaria stuff up just so I can show you uh, a bit of a size difference between the Octarius set um, and the Chalneth set. Uh, this can literally like fit inside of <laughs> the, the Chalneth set. So um, quite a bit different in terms of size. There's a lot more here. Uh, so like if you're interested in like getting into Kill Team and maybe learning uh, big games of 40K, this was probably a cool set to pick up because you'll be able to, I mean, you can take the, the Octarius terrain as well, uh, but this is something that's going to cover a larger table much easier. Um, so, I'm going to put this over here. I figured I'd show you how I assemble the buildings. Um, so, the beginning of the instructions, they have you, um, they have you assemble all these wall sections uh, individually and then uh, you'll put them all together to make a larger structure. They're all made to be modular, um, and you do not have to follow the instructions. Um, so these wall sections are set so that you can fasten them together like this. You can do them at an angle if you want. You can do them at 90 degrees, and for whatever reason, you can do them at like a 45. Uh, not that you would ever do that, but on the off chance that that's something you're interested in doing, you have the ability to do so. Um, you could probably pin these. You could probably, if you're a crazy person, you could probably magnetize them as well. Um, I don't think I would go that far. Uh, but there are a lot of options here. So uh, all these wall sections, my the first thing I'm going to tell you to do is build all the wall sections. Go ahead and... Uh, lay them out so I've got them all standing here in front and I put them out in the proper order so that I know what comes after what or before what uh, and then I actually also went ahead uh, I took the roof section on this part of the manual and I just went ahead and just glued that whole thing together um, now before we get into actual assembly I do want to show you um, a lot of these little archway pieces have this skull thing on the top, and the instructions tell you to cut them off of most of them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, unless you're not following the instructions, you have a very specific plan, you're going to dry fit this thing as you go along. Uh, but if you're following the instructions, no matter what the instructions say, every single time, cut this off. Um, with the large building, it tells you not to cut off a section that runs from here to here to here and this would not fit flush and I had already glued everything down uh, so this doesn't look as great as it could but it's all damaged section so I'm not really too worried about it but uh, all of this would have had like a two millimeter gap with that um, that piece running inside of it so it just looked weird and I didn't like the way that the part set so if you're gonna follow the instructions cut that piece off of everything. It does help you line up these floors where there's a large section of floor here. Um, it will help you line that up, but as long as you don't glue against it, you should be able to cut it out pretty easily. Uh, I had to take my saw and um, get in there and you know pry glue apart and stuff. Now as for cutting this off, it's very straightforward. You could use the saw if you wanted to. There's like a little groove in here. You can just fit the saw in and just saw it off. Uh, if you don't have a saw, just take your cutters and go ahead and give that a little cut, twist. And then if you need to, you can cut the little extra section off. Now if you saw this, you can save it and use it for kit bashes and stuff like that. I don't know what you would put a, a line of skulls on, but I'm sure somebody out there has some ideas. So um, if you're interested in preserving these, that's a way you can do it. Uh, otherwise, you can just go ahead and chop them off. You won't need them for this build at all. Again, this is kind of uh, if you're following the instructions. So once I take those, I'm going to toss those over here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife 
and there's inevitably going to be some bits that stick up. Just kind of run your knife across that. You don't have to get it totally flat, but get it pretty flush. Um, and it shouldn't take too much work. There you go. So, um, for assembling, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this corner wall section and it's going to plug directly into this wall section. So what I like to do is I'll hold that together with my finger and I like to use plastic glue. This is not my favorite brand. I prefer to use this, but I don't have a ton of this left so I'd rather use it on my figures. Uh, but Mr. Cement S, um, to me, extra thin, pretty much any kind of plastic glue. Uh, you can use super glue if you like that better. Um, but I just take this, I hold these together, and I just kind of tap it to that edge. And then I'll do the rivet sections. And then I'll do the other side. And then I'll come back and I'll do like my inner sections one more time. And this time I'll kind of drag the brush along. That way I'm making sure that there's glue in the whole thing. Now by the time you're done with that, you should be able to just let go and the part's bonded. It's not strong, you can still pull it apart if you if something's not right, but um, you can just kind of leave that alone for a minute and it should start to set. Uh, the next thing I'm going to recommend doing is reading ahead in the instructions. Uh, that kind of maybe should have been evident with the uh, I constructed the roof super early. Um, just get all the stuff you need out, that way it's all there, it's all readily accessible to you, and you can just kind of move through this. Um, so for the sidewall section, we're going to do the exact same thing we just did, and we're just going to keep pushing that along until uh, the entire structure is put together. Uh, now you might have to hold these different ways, it's going to get kind of funky as it gets big, um, but you shouldn't have too much trouble. And if you want to do it in subsections, like do like if one wall is facing this way and one wall is facing this way, build each of those walls and then put them together. Uh, just work in a way that's easy for you, and it's not going to cause you too much grief. Um, so here we go. And then I'm going to switch this over to the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. I'm going to finish assembling uh, the base walls, and then I'll show you how I attach the ceiling. Spoiler alert, it's not much different. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll come back and we'll just, you know, get through this. Okay, so we've got our wall section assembled. We're going to assemble or attach the roof to it. I've assembled mine here. You can assemble it as you go, or you can do it like I did. You know, whatever way works best for you. Um, so, as you can see, it's not totally flush, but that's okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here with this middle section. I'm going to spin this around like that so I can hold it better. And I'm going to basically push pressure this way so that this section of the wall is flush with the, the floor. I'm going to put my glue in here, you get a lot of it, make sure that there's plenty. And then we're going to apply that pressure. I'm also going to push down a little bit because these little corner pieces should fit into these columns. Um, and that's just going to get things started. So while I'm holding that down, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the next section.
And then if you want, you can even throw some down here in the corner just to make sure that it's bonding to the bottom as well. Give that a little bit of a squeeze. I'm going to do the same kind of thing with that. And then I'm going to go ahead and work my way over this way. Now this one is a little trickier just because there's a corner, but that's why we're using plastic cement. That's why I'm using plastic cement is it's going to slowly melt that top layer of plastic and it's got plenty of time to sit and cure and do what it needs to do and I'm not really in a rush. So just like last time we're going to get this all over. And this one we're going to try and do like two ways. Just get that started. Go ahead and grab that. Make sure you cement this all the way down. That's going to lock that shape down the way that it's supposed to be. And if you want to put more, you can go ahead and put it in here. Put it over here. And then we just let that sit for a little bit. Now, if you've got some weird clamps, you could probably clamp this down and it'll it'll dry uh, and be held the way that it needs to be held. But that's pretty much it for this section. Uh, so next, I'm going to start grabbing these little corner sections here, and I'm going to glue these on to the corners. And again, that's going to help you reinforce uh, the pressure that needs to be put on these parts and keep things the right shape. So. I'm going to fit that in there, make sure it works. Run that glue into there. And just give that a gentle little press. If you want to do the bottom, you can do the bottoms as well. You really shouldn't have to, but if it makes you comfortable, go ahead and do it. Um, now, while I'm on the subject of this, um, I don't know if I missed one or misplaced one. Uh, I didn't have enough of these little corner pieces uh, or conversely one of these. So I just went ahead and made one out of the single ones um, and that should work just fine. Um, and then another thing is make sure that when you're gluing these down the little triangle pieces on these are facing upward. Uh, lastly, um, you know, you're going to put a wall section on top of these. Shouldn't have any issues from here. It should just kind of fit the way that it's supposed to. I'm just going to make sure all this is glued down before I start talking about the, the next section. All right, so there's that all done. On top of this, we're going to turn to the last page of the instructions. Um, we're going to add our last wall sections. Uh, so from here, we're going to add this guy, then this guy, and lastly this one. And then we got these two little cap pieces here, and those will go here. Now, if you want to, you can glue these together and then leave this section off entirely. Um, again, this set is made to be modular, so you could glue these together and then you'll be able to pop them on and off if that's something you're interested in doing. Um, again, I'm going to keep this the way that it is in the instructions just so that um, I can play the Chalmuth, uh set without having to think too much about it. I can just set it up and we can play the scenario modes. Um, and I also already own the other previously released version of this uh, from the last edition of Kill Team. So 
I can easily pull that apart and use that to make my own structures as well. So um, once this is glued, I'm going to go ahead and start priming. We're going to use Krylon primer on this. I could, you can use your airbrush if you want to. I just don't think that uh, it's economically viable or a good idea to, to spend all this time airbrushing when I can do a couple passes of it upside down, get the inside, spin it around to the outside, uh, and then flip it over once that's dried for an hour, get the rest of it, and then I can start painting right away. Um, whereas with the airbrush, I'd probably be sitting there for about an hour spraying uh, just to get it covered. So when we come back, um, I'm going to have this primed, and we're going to talk about how I'm going to paint these pieces. Um, so I'll be back. All right, so we're back. We've got the terrain all primed up. Uh, most of it's over here off to the side, but uh, here's some of the larger pieces. Um, you know, everything is primed in, um, I think it's called whole red, red oxide primer by Krylon. Um, <clears throat> so I just picked this up. It is a primer, so it's pretty matte. Um, went ahead and just gave everything a, a quick coat. We just I missed the underside of that, so I'll get that before we get started with this piece. Um, but I figured I'd grab something that had a bunch of different elements on it um, for the purpose of the video, and we'll demonstrate on that. So uh, here is what we're going to test on. Let me bump my exposure just a tiny bit. I guess that'll have to work. Um, <clears throat> so um, the way I approach terrain typically is I try to keep things um, simple and manageable. That way, even if you aren't incredibly skilled, for me, it's it's a I like to be quick. Um, terrain has been sitting around for a while. It's something that's dirty. It's something that doesn't need to look very pretty. Um, this is obviously a ruined building. Um, I'm not going to take a bunch of time to make sure that everything looks super nice and crisp and uh, wonderful um, because it doesn't need to. Uh, it just needs to cover your table and look good on the table. Um, so <clears throat> with that, my approach to this is something that is incredibly simple. It's incredibly easy to do. It's something that doesn't take a lot of time and I think it gives a really good result uh, as far as what everything looks like when it's all done. So here's my test piece. It's not 100% complete. There's like I got to paint the little radiator and some of these pipes and stuff in here. Uh, but for the most part, this is what it's going to look like. Um, so I think that looks pretty good. You get a nice bit of contrast. Uh, I like the what I did with the windows and then like the kind of light gray on the inside of the broken pieces. Uh, I think that all looks really nice together. There's enough contrast between these two that it doesn't look like super samey. Like from far away, it kind of does. Um, but when you when you get in and actually look at it, it's different. Uh, the weathered metal pieces, it's something I wasn't in love with until after I uh, kind of put everything else together and it kind of came together for me. Um, I'm not sure if I'm sold on the copper pipes. We might change that, but I'm not really sure yet. So we're just going to feel it out and uh, go with what feels good. So um, I'm going to recommend a palette of some sort. This is just a lid to a Tupperware container that I ruined uh, like years ago, and I just kind of use it as a dry palette ever since. I'll every so often I'll peel the uh, the paint that I've used off of it. Get you a little water cup, and then you're gonna need a couple of paper towels. After that, you're gonna need some large brushes. Uh, so for the first brush we're gonna use is gonna be a pretty sizable. This is a 3 4 inch 19 millimeter flat. Um, this is like from Walmart, so you don't need anything fancy. You don't want to use a nice brush for this. Um, and then give me like two seconds, I gotta actually grab my paints out of the paint box. Alright, so paint number one, we're gonna use, uh, I've got pure red here from the Army Painter. Uh, any like nice, deep, saturated red will do. Um, something that's obviously a red. We're not gonna lean towards orange or uh, purple or anything like that. We just want something that is a very heavy red. We're going to dip most of this brush in this large uh, pool. 
We're gonna get a little bit of that on there, and we're gonna brush a, not a lot of it off, but we're gonna brush most of it off. So just like that, that's pretty good. You want a nice heavy dry brush for this, and I'm just gonna start on this face like this, and then I'm gonna go up and down. And then you can do like little circles and stuff. Just make sure you kind of get in every little area. Uh, now what this is going to do is it's going to get in most of what you've done already. Uh, and you know you might say, well Justin, why do we prime this in this hull red if um, we're just going to do this heavy base coat dry brush over it. And that's because you're still going to have some edges and stuff and, and some of the nooks and crannies will still have that, that kind of burnt red look it's really more of a you don't want black here because you're gonna it's gonna be a pain to cover uh, white if you miss anything it's gonna be really stark so if you prime everything in a color that's close to what you're base coating in if you miss anything it's not a tremendous deal so and again, you don't have to be real neat with this. If you miss areas, like if you kind of like go a little lighter on this corner, for example, and leave it, it's not going to be a huge deal. You're not really going to notice it all that much. You might because you're painting it, but when everything's all together on the table, I don't think too many people are going to pay attention and say, oh, Justin missed this corner. Um, I don't think people really sweat the way terrain looks a ton anyway, as long as it's... You know, something that looks good on the table and your minis look good on on it, you know, that's all that really matters. So, <clears throat> there's the front face, um, there's the side face. You can already see a little bit of a tonal difference. Uh, this is much more saturated and alive. Uh, this is still kind of dull and orange and brown. Uh, a little bit of red in there, but, you know, we want something like this. We don't want it to be completely red, but we want it to, to feel red. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of this piece, and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a wash over this dry brush. Uh, so we've brought things up a little bit, we're going to bring them back down, and then we're going to bring them back up again. Uh, so I'm using Karaberg Crimson, you can use Nolan Oil, you can use uh, Agrax Earthshade, you can use a black wash, a brown wash, a uh, red wash. Um, maybe if you dilute it a little bit, I, I could see a purple wash working. I don't think I'd step too far outside of that. Um, you know, basically whatever kind of tone you want all your shadows and stuff to have, that's where you're going to be. I'm going to use the same brush I used for the dry brush here, just because it's a large brush. And I just want to get this done. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to just blast this wash all over these surfaces. We want to get everything, so uh, don't be shy. Get in there. Make sure you get everything. Now I will say maybe be a little bit more careful around the bottoms. And if you get any pooling, just try and address that before it dries or coffee stains or anything. Um, and you know, really if need be, you can even just kind of touch it with the paper towel. Soak some of that up. You really just want it to sit around the rivets and stuff. Um, so like maybe even if you want to save the, the bottoms till last and just kind of do one of these numbers and drag your brush across it just so you get some of that color in there uh, that should be fine but I'm gonna go ahead and wash all of this I'm gonna get everything nice and not again not too saturated if you get a little bit of pooling like around these kind of areas in the middle of the panels or around the cracks and stuff I don't think that's as big of a deal as if there's like a heavy pool like over here in the bottom corner where you can tell that it was definitely just a wash that was applied um, but if there's a little bit pooled in some areas, it kind of adds to the effect and it makes the wall look a little bit more interesting. Um, so kind of proceed with caution, but uh, again, it's your model, whatever, uh, whatever gets you the result you're looking for is what I would recommend going with. So there we go. Um, come across the bottom of that. I am going to get these, even though it's going to get covered up. It, I feel like it just kind of gives you a little bit of extra something to stick to. Um, so I'm going to finish this up. We'll come back and check it out in just a minute. All right, so now we've got um, our wash applied. It is dried. Uh, there's a st still It's still a little wet, like deep in here, but I don't think we're going to hit that with a dry brush, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, so like I said, we brought it. We brought it up, we brought it down, 
I'm going to bring it back up again. This should kind of put things in line a little bit. Um, this dry brush is going to be a little bit more delicate, a little bit closer to what a traditional dry brush would be. Um, so I'm going to find a nice soft brush. So here we got uh, another Walmart brush. This is a uh, one fourth inch scruffy. Um, it's just, it's really soft. So that's the reason I'm using it. Um, I'm going to take a um, more orangey red. Um, now if you don't have something a little bit more orangey, you can mix some orange into your base red. Uh, but I'm going to be using Wild Rider Red for this one, uh, just because it's what I got. Um, and it works pretty well. I've already done the other piece in it, so we're going to just press on so everything looks the same. So, uh, take a pretty good bit of that. We're going to do just like last time, except this time we're going to get a little bit more of that paint off the brush. So we want to work that in here, work it into the bristles, and then move over here and see how it looks. Uh, that's a little bit heavier than I like. There we go. So that's pretty good. And then just like last time, we're going to maybe do one section at a time. We're going to start and just kind of work that up. And don't focus on an area too, too long. Just kind of work your way across the piece. And then in these flat areas, just kind of give it a little scrub. And this is why we're using a soft brush. Because um, that'll leave a little bit of that behind. It'll catch that little crack there. And, um, you know, it won't tear your paint up. So just go ahead and, like I said, work your way across this piece. Um, maybe change the angle a little bit so you can get around these pillars. Come up on the top. Um, twist your brush as you, as you go along. Um, adjust the angle from which you're attacking the piece and if you feel like it's not working go ahead and grab a little bit more paint rework that into the bristles there there we go. and this should only take you a few minutes to knock something like this out now the larger pieces uh, I'm going to tackle the same way, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I think I'm going to just kind of do one step at a time every day or two um, until I get at least most of the way finished um, with this kind of stuff. So, there we go. We'll come in on the inside. Let's go ahead and reapply our paint. Oop, that's a little heavier than I want. Let's go ahead and get a little bit more of that off there. That's okay. Not a big deal. That's why we, we add that light touch. Um, and the second something steps out, you know, you can step away before it gets out of hand. There we go. I'm bring this over here. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, we're going to grab this stuff. We're going to grab the inside of this. And there we go. So we got a nice kind of orangey highlight to everything. It keeps everything like that that red. Um, you know, the orange is a little bit subtle. Um, so that's pretty much it for the base. Now, if you wanted to leave it like this, um, I would at least pick out the windows in black. Um, you know, everything else got the landlord special. Um, but you know, as long as you've got like one or two colors on here, that should be sufficient. Um, so, I, like I said, if you wanted to stop here, I'd pick the windows out uh, in black, maybe these little skull things in black, and call it a day. Um, so, what I'm going to do next is we're going to come in, well, I'll show you the next step, but we're going to come in with black, and we're going to pick out everything that's not going to be red in black. So, let me come back and we'll uh, go ahead and knock that out. Alright, so in the palette, we're going to go ahead and put, uh, let's say, like three or four drops of... Uh, black. I'm using uh, the Army Painter black, but um, any black you've got will work. And then to this, I'm going to add maybe two drops of glaze medium. Uh, so what this is going to do is it's going to thin it out and it's going to make sure it flows off the brush. 
which is a, a big thing. Um, but it's also going to kind of help make sure it doesn't dry super fast. Uh, now, typically, that's not much of an issue with black, um, but I prefer to be more safe than sorry. So we're just going to mix that in a little bit, make sure that's all nice and incorporated. I'm going to twist that brush a couple times, get some of that excess off. And then we're going to go to it. So uh, what I like to do is I like to just kind of trace out the insides of the windows first. Just because it kind of gives me an idea where to look later as I'm uh, kind of doing the borders and stuff. Um, I'm trying my best to use as much of the side of the brush as I can. So if, if I do slip a little bit, um, I don't, I'm not worried about accidentally catching something else. So um, there's a slight curve to these windows so you do have to kind of like pull the brush down a little bit as you're going see it kind of catches those two edges um, but you can come in like that just make sure you're picking out all the, the details here um, so once we get through with the windows, uh, or well, the sides of the windows, I'm going to grab the fronts, and that's pretty much the same process. I'm going to drag it up, and then I'm going to drag it down just to make sure if there's any of those rivets that caught um, and are messing with your brush strokes. There you go. And then, you know, the number one rule to painting minis is don't be afraid to turn what you're painting. It's going to make your life a lot easier if you look at it from another angle. to make sure you're, you're getting everything, make sure you're painting all the stuff. Um, so then that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to paint these uh, big pieces right here. Um, now, how far you want to take this is up to you. Uh, so there's like this little box here. I'm going to leave that red. Uh, I might come back and paint these little uh, tubes coming out. I might do those like silver or another color, but right now I'm just going to leave them red. So work your way around these details. Make sure you get all this stuff inside here. Uh, make sure you paint the pipes as well. It's just going to help you out later. Uh, between, you know, making sure that the metallics look the way they want, or that you want them to, and, um, you know, helping you identify what you need to paint still. Because uh, there's a very strong contrast between this red and this black. Uh, now on the inside, um, there's not a ton here for me. Um, I think I'm going to paint these little pipes here. I'll grab those guys. Um, and I'm not too worried about being like the most precise if like the, a little bit of the edge here is still red. Uh, a wash will fix that later. So, and then I made like a little mistake, not a big deal. Um, so I could either come in with a wet brush and clean that up or I can just leave it and turn it into some weathering later. Um, I'm going to grab these dials on the outside. I'm going to keep the inside red just because I know I'm going to come back in with like a white or like a off-white and kind of pick that out. Um, I'm going to leave these big, large sections the way they are. Uh, I might come in later and just paint out like the pipes and the tubes, but I think I'm going to leave the inside red um, just because that's a lot of like nonsense work that nobody's going to pay attention to and it doesn't really matter. Uh, but I will get the border later. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish picking these windows out and we'll come back and look at what it looks like when it's all done and then we'll talk about the next step. All right, so here we go. Um, I've blacked out all the uh, parts that I'm going to do metal. I've done the window frames. I forgot to mention that I'm doing like the little exposed wall sections as well uh, in black. I'm going to come over those now. We're going to start with uh, we're going to start with a gray. So um, again, uniform gray from the army, army painter is just what's what's next to me. It's what I used on the other one, so we don't need a ton of it because there's not a whole lot of this. Um, and we're just going to grab a regular brush to base coat with, and I'm literally just going to come in here and base coat uh, all of these gray sections or the the exposed wall sections with this color. Um, now, if you want to, you can also uh, dry brush this over the tops of the broken pillars and stuff um, to kind of give that like rubble effect. Uh, sometimes I, I did it here. I'm not really the most in love with it, but it doesn't. It's not something that I like hate either. So um, 
depending on what you're going for. You might want to entertain that idea, you might not. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to go ahead and base out all these destroyed wall sections in this gray, and then we'll come back and go over the next step. Okay, so now that we've got that all base coated out, um, we're going to go ahead and apply a wash over everything. And this is just going to kind of hit those recesses, it's going to hit all the dark spots, and it's going to just give us our, uh, not really shadows, but, you know, our dark areas that we need. So, uh, it'll also kind of highlight those panels, because this is a little bit of a neutral gray. So, it's going to add that definition we want. I'm using a black wash. If you want to use a brown wash, you can do that. Um, I wouldn't stray too far from that just because you're working with a gray. Um, but again, if, if you're going for something a little bit more stylized, uh, you know, use whatever you like. So let's go ahead and grab the tops of these. And you can go a little heavier on the tops of this, um, where like if you dry brushed it might have missed a couple spots. It should help you kind of cover your mistakes. Um, but you'll know when to stop. And if you put too much like that, uh, go ahead and work over to the next area and then just kind of hold your brush against where you put the wash and it should soak most of it up. Um, you can also wipe off excess on a paper towel and do the same thing. Um, and if a little bit gets down here, again, it's not a big deal. It's only going to kind of add to, you know, how many different colors are playing around inside uh, all of this. So, you know, typically the more, especially when it comes to more neutral colors like this, this is like a really, like, black brown wash this is a null no, no, by the way um you know you're gonna just kind of increase the contrast and the definition of everything with all these little extra subtle colors going on and stuff like that so here we go just get the top of that and then we're gonna let that dry well, we're looking good now. So this is this is definitely what I would call a stopping point. If you wanted to 100% stop here, um, you know, you've got the base of the walls painted, you've got the window frames done, you've picked out some extra little detail. This is this looks fine. This will look good on the table. Um, I don't think anybody would have any issues playing on a board filled with terrain that looked like this. Uh, now I'm going to keep going, obviously. Um, so like I said, in the next step, we're going to look at the windows. Uh, the windows are going to be uh, like this metallic, it's like a very subtle metallic, you might not be able to see it on camera, but um, we're going to put that in there, and then we're going to base coat these out, and we'll wrap this guy up, so I'll see you guys in a second. Alright, so this is probably my favorite step in this whole process, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit, uh, I'm going to try and capture this as best I can, um, I don't know why this keeps... I guess that'll have to work. So, um, this is this is what kind of brings the windows to life for me. It's very subtle, but I think it looks really cool. So, we've already got the windows based out in black. We're going to take lead belcher. We're going to take a medium to maybe kind of small dry brush. I'm literally just going to open this up. I'm going to dip the sides a little bit in this paint and then just like any other dry brush we're going to go ahead and work that in we're going to try and get as much of this off as possible so work it in and then move over to a new section and you want almost nothing on here so that'll look good yeah and then we're just going to pick this up and I'm going to just kind of work along the edges of these windows you want to catch these edges you want to work the insides a little bit. Just kind of grab it from every different angle. If you get on this, it's fine, because we're going to paint that last. So that's what's kind of good about this part. Hello. Hello. I'm here to pay the bill. Hold on, Aubrey. So 
there we go. And then on the next one, just the same thing. We're just going to work our way around. We're going to grab these highlights. And you just want to make sure you work as much of that, that dark silver in there as you can and pop these highlights out. You don't want it to be too strong, or at least I don't. Um, maybe, maybe you do. See that wash is still a little bit wet, but that's okay. We'll just do our best to avoid it. Now I don't know how well that's going to show up on camera, but I'll try and grab some pictures at the end that show it off a little bit, um, just so you can kind of get an idea what this effect looks like. We're going to grab just a teeny bit more paint. We're going to do that again. Just want to make sure that we are getting everything that we want here. Okay. And let's grab the outside of this window. So just. That's uh, pretty good. Grab the tops. Make sure you, you can go a little heavier on the tops. So if that's where you want to start, um, you know, just to kind of get a feel for what your dry brush is looking like. I feel like the tops where they're broken off would have the most silver on them anyway. And then there's a little bit of silver in like some of these parts too. Uh, don't be afraid to grab those. All right, so I think that looks pretty cool. I'm actually gonna come back and grab a little bit of this one because I missed some stuff on it. There we go. All right, so uh, one of the last steps left is going to be to paint these details, um, these little details as well. And then anything that's on the inside, you can pretty much do what you want with. Um, but we're going to go ahead and talk about the big metal details next. All right, so next we're going to go ahead and we're going to paint these little skull details around the kit. For this, I'm going to use my all-time favorite um, acrylic metallic paint, and that is uh, Army Painter Rough Iron. You can use whatever you want. Um, this is just kind of like what I like to do with it. Um, I will say, I don't know what it is about these Army Painter metallics, but it seems like every one of the metallics that I have, the tip has like exploded into the cap. Um, all of them. Which is kind of weird, but whatever. Yeah, I, I still got the paint. It still works. So we're going to just go ahead and grab that. And we're just going to base coat all these little skulls and the, the borders around them. It's like a really dark, uh, like copper almost. I think it looks really cool. And it kind of gives you a little bit of like, it, it ties in really well because it contrasts the windows. But it complements all the red. There we go, just kind of keep doing that all the way around. Block those guys in. And then we'll come back and talk about the last little bit. 
All right, so for the last little bit that needs to be actually painted, we're going to go ahead and use some uh, Citadel Stormhost Silver. Uh, you could use Lead Belcher. You could use um, any brand of silver that you like. Um, this is just the one I'm going with. Um, I wanted something that was a little bit brighter to stand out against all the uh, kind of dark colors. I'm going to grab a pretty good piece of that, put that on my palette, and we're going to mix in just a little bit of metal medium. And then like a little bit of water, just to keep it flowing. Now this, I will say, right out the gate, this is not the best um, metal paint to be base coating anything with, but um, you know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna wash it down a little bit. We're gonna weather it a little bit, so it's not a, a huge deal. Just make sure you get a nice base coat on there. It might take two layers. Um, take your time. And there's not really a ton of metal on here, so, you know, just, just work your way around. Take your time. And get that beast out. So we've got the inside pipes done, we've got the outer pieces done. So I'm going to go ahead and grab just some hatchet copper. We're not going to go too crazy with this, we're not really going to worry about thinning it. We're just going to open up the pot, we're going to grab a little bit. And I'm just going to grab a couple of these uh, pipes here. So like maybe like a little section of this, just to kind of give it a little bit of pop make it stand out a little bit we don't want to go too crazy with this i'm not really worried about making a whole bunch of extra contrast or anything like that i just want to add a little bit of visual interest so that it looks like we did just a tiny bit more than base coat this silver um, i'm going to grab a couple of these pipes inside here the same way we're just going to give them just a little bit of a base coat this paint doesn't cover the greatest it, it works best over uh like a like a gold color but we will make do so there we go grab those um let's grab like one of these guys up here just go ahead and pick that top piece out and then one more little pipe section down here and that's that's more than enough that's perfect so we don't need a ton, just like I said, just a little bit, just to break it up a little bit. And then we're going to let that dry. We're going to hit this with a uh, Nuln Oil Wash, or not Nuln Oil, um, Agrax Earthshade. We want to make that, we want that nice, dirty, dingy tone that comes with that. And I'm going to show you that on this piece right here. Um, you know, again, straight out of the pot, we're not too worried about thinning this down or anything like that where it's okay to be a little messy you know, grab that little panel there grab these pipes if you want to trace around the edge of these it'll kind of help those stand out just a little bit but you want to give everything a really nice generous coat of this paint or this wash to um you know make this stand out just a little bit it makes it look real dirty uh, like it's definitely been left and, uh, you know, weather has done its thing. So, all right, go ahead and grab some of that, put it around these pipes up here and stuff too. Um, so there you go, just like that. Um, I like to put some of the heavy wash uh, deep in some of these open areas just so that uh, when that dries, it 
kind of covers up where any of that base coat might have stuck through. Um, and you can already see how different that looks, just applying that wash over these sections here. Um, it looks so much nicer. Now if you wanted to paint these little pistons or whatever, uh, these pipes, whatever these are, different color. There's like some tubes and some other stuff here. There's buttons. Maybe you put a, a dot of red or some green, maybe some blue on the buttons. Make those stand out a little bit too. But there you go. So that's that. And we'll go ahead and jump into like some pictures. And, um, you know, I'll, you can see what this all looks like once it's all done.